Well, shalom, shalom, everybody. Ariel Bart Sadok here from the Kosher Torah School, found online at, where else? www.koshertorah.com. Do you know we've actually been at that website since 1997? Oh gosh, 20, 23 years. And that's just the website. The school's even older than that. Shows you how much older I am. But anyway, welcome to our daily Sefer Yitzirah classes. This is class number 12 in this series. And of course, we're dedicating these classes to the health, to the well-being of everybody today who is facing the threat of the corona, the COVID-19. We pray that they should be healthy and well. And those who are sick should have a complete, speedy, total recovery. And let us not forget to pray and bless that our global, not just local economies, will also have a refuah shalema, a complete and total economic recovery, and that we can come out of these hard times better, stronger, wiser, more determined, more knowledgeable to know things that we need to do and implement those things. With that in mind, we are now going to begin Mishnah number three from the first chapter. And again, the first chapter of the Sefi Yitzirah, after introducing us to the concept of the letters, is now going to put them aside. And we're going to talk exclusively from here on in on this chapter about the Sefirot. Now remember something about Sefirot. In spite of what Ever the theoretical Kabbalists, which is almost everybody out there, want to tell you that there are these metaphysical realities somewhere out there on the other side of the rainbow. Forget all of that. This is what we're going to learn right here is one of the most important understandings of all of the mystical or Kabbalistic teachings. It states here in Mishnah Gimel, and I quote, Eses Belima, the ten sefirot, remember we described already what belima means, that they're the energy influence underlying all physical form. It says here, mispar eser etzpaot, the number of ten fingers, chamesh keneged chamesh, five neg, uh, corresponding to five. Ubrit yahid mechuvan beemtsa, with a singular covenant focused or placed in the middle. Babrit shown in the covenant of the tongue, or Babrit Hamaor, and the covenant of the penis. Okay, let's get a little graphic there, but what are we talking about? Well, I'm going to let Rabbi Haim Vital speak for himself. Hakavana Lebe'er, the intent here is to explain to us, to Amhayotam Esesvirot, why we have ten. Ha'inyanam Hine. Now, the matter is this, quoting here from the verse in the book of Job, From my flesh will I come and gaze upon God. We see, obviously, that there are ten fingers in the human hand, the human hands. All right, so therefore, the sefirot, which correspond to the secret of hands, they say, then by definition, they have to be 10. He uh, quotes here a whole bunch of different sources to validate this from the Zohar. I'm not going to bother reading all of those. Uh, we get the gist, but I am going to continue what he writes here. Even the most physical of worlds here, the most lowest physical of worlds, Chalushe koach, those that are the weakest in power. Ba'ale ketz ugvul, that are, you know, those things formed with boundaries and and and, and finite, in other words. V'shi'ur, v'tachlit, that are all measured and have, you know, limitation. Okay? Yihiyu ve'id ad'enu meziv or shechinato. All right? It is still the same that all of these things are blessed with, or if you will, it's actually the word here is based upon the word Aden, which actually means pleasure, are actually receiving the pleasure of the wondrous light of the Shekhinah. The Yasigu Oro, and they will grasp its light, to receive its good. 
אז זה שיעורי חוכמתו יתברך להציל עשר ספירות, עשר מדרגות. And thus it was God's wisdom in the highest level to create the ten ספירות, corresponding ten, ten levels, if you will. ועל ידי זה, and by this, כוח כה לכל הנבראים. And therefore there is power within all that is the created worlds, the formed worlds, and the done worlds, which is again a reference to Biria, Yetzira, and Asia. להשיג אלוהתו כפי כוחם, to grasp divinity each with their own individual level of power. Now, this, as I said, is a very, very important point in Kabbalah. Why? Because in spirituality, and you darn well know it, especially if you are following the Torah path, especially if you're studying in Kabbalah from what's out there, you are taught a fundamental principle which is in error and that is this the spiritual world is good it's everything it's where you want to be it's where everything is happening and this physical world it's gross it's disgusting who the heck needs it why are we even here all right so our spiritual path should be to dispose of all connections to the physical. We have to be high, sublime, unemotional, unattached. Isn't that what we're taught? Yeah, that's not right. That's not kosher. How about that? And you got plenty of people who are going to teach that to you. And they will quote to you many, many sources that have been written over thousands of years. And I acknowledge those sources exist. And that is And they are, I should say, considered a valid opinion in Jewish practice. But the problem, and this is the real problem, it contradicts the energetic realities of the universe. You see, God created all the universes, including this physical one. There's nothing wrong with this physical universe, nothing at all. This unit, physical universe is good, it's great, and we're supposed to benefit and enjoy it. That's why we're here. No. Our present forms are not our original and natural forms. We have devolved to a point, and we will again re-evolve back to where we once were. This is all that symbolic talk about what happened in the Garden of Eden. But our physical forms is what we presently exist in, is not our indigenous Adamic form. Essentially, it is a cloak, a vehicle, a vessel, through which our true essence, our true bodies are cloaked. So this physical world of ours, granted, it's not ours, but we're here for a reason. And that, of course, is, like it said here, to shine that light. You see, everything in the universe is a concentric whole. Everything is like science will tell you, quantumly entangled, every particle with every other particle. And when you tap into consciousness at that level, you recognize, like the verse in the Bible says, the whole world is full of God's kavod, which is his energetic presence, cosmic consciousness. Others can call it the Akashic records, the collective soul of Adam, all kinds of different names to apply to a level of experiential reality that you're never going to grasp until you experience it. How do I experience all this stuff? Like the verse says in Job, which means from my flesh will I gaze upon God. No, we don't look at the pleasures of the flesh as being bad or evil or distracting or taking us away from God. On the contrary, we gaze upon our physicality as being the vehicle, the vessel through which the lights of the divine materialize. So therefore, by addressing, gazing, contemplating, meditating upon the vessel, We come to recognize and see the light that is shining through it. So therefore, if you really want to contemplate, if you will, the divine, well, I want to contemplate what we call in Hebrew the shiur koma, the measure of the divine body. Well, we all know Rambam says, right, 
There is no form or no semblance of form. Like the Bible itself says, second commandment, you have no image, no face for God. Got it. So how am I going to learn about God by thinking about myself? Because we are not, or I should say God is not a physical entity, but God is an expression consciousness in energetic expression. You know, that's a good definition for God. Consciousness in energetic expression. Because ultimately the sefirot are just the vessels through which the divine consciousness materialize and interacts at all the different gradient levels in all universes, including ours. That's what you need to understand. So therefore, when all those high and sublime energy forms materialize in the fields in this physical world, what do we do? No, our path, and this is the big distinction between, for example, our path and the Buddhist path. If you remember the Buddha, Siddhartha himself, he looked at the world and said, this world is full of horrible, horrible stuff. There's only one way to achieve happiness. That's to detach and disconnect from it all and just be in the sublimity of the inner reality. That's all well and good, but that's not our way. That's not the way you bring the light down to earth. Now, remember, we talk about up and down and you really should think more in a circle. It's like connecting a circuit the light from the higher dimensional planes materializes and manifests in this physical world for a reason. And our purpose and reason is to take this physical world as imbalanced as it is and realign all of its natural energies so that by calibrating the energetic flow, first in human consciousness and then through materialization, through human action, we elevate a universe. We allow the universe to materialize its proper flow. Think about this. Turn on a faucet of water. Water pours out. You understand that? If I have a bottle, and I want to fill the bottle with water. Well, if the water is pouring here and my bottle is here, how much gets filled? Obviously, nothing. Therefore, you might look at the bottle as being somehow bad or wrong or depleted or a waste. You say, let's get rid of the bottle. We don't need it. Well, yes, you do. Because the purpose is to get the water in the bottle so that the bottle full of water will then water the plants. I mean, it's common sense. So what do you do? You're not going to move the faucet. You got to move the bottle. Put it under the faucet. Our behavior and chain needs to change in order so that we can receive the calibration of the energetic flow. How do I do that? Well, obviously, you can read all the religious books. And the religious books are going to tell you, you got to do this, and you got to do that, and you got to do that, and you got to do this. And they'll give you a whole bunch of rules. Now, in our Torah path, of course, we have what we call halacha, the path, the way in which we walk. But you'll notice something about halacha. You have multiple different opinions with things, some which are even contradictory to others. And all the contradictory opinions can be correct. I'm going to give you one that's applicable very to this very day. Here we are now at the beginning of the Hebrew month of Nisan, preparing for the Passover holiday. We're in the middle of the coronavirus scare, as everyone knows. And we have this concept now of social distancing. And here's the question. You have isolated individuals, the elderly and the like, is it possible to use elements of modern technology, such as video conferencing, with a program similar to like Zoom or WhatsApp or something, that these individuals in distant remote locations could, through this technology, enter into a group observing the Passover Seder? All kinds of different questions with regards to this in Jewish law. There is a group of rabbis very authoritative rabbis who came out and said, yes, go ahead and do it. And equally authoritative rabbis who say, you're crazy. How could you say that? Don't do it. And you'll always find the more extremist radicals who are so disconnected from energy are the ones who say, no, 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 you got to follow laws, right? 
And you know what I'm doing with my hand because that's showing mindlessness. When you understand the flow of energy, you understand its natural movement. How do I know this? Because I gaze upon my own. I can see there is a right hand. I understand a right hand. I see there's a left hand. I understand the left hand. You notice my right hand and left hand are different. They're not the same. They're mirror opposites of one another. Why is that? We talk about these covenants, the covenant of the tongue, the covenant of that. No, 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 show, all right? What does this all mean? We are dealing here with physical expressions of manifest energy. You notice you have 10 fingers. You notice below you have 10 toes. Then you have a protrusion that comes out of the mouth, which is hidden, and a protrusion in the male body, which comes out, which we put under clothing. So essentially, 10 fingers correspond to 10 sefirot. Oh, okay. And ah, here's a good catch. In our previous class, we learned about Hadar, the powers of the expansive, the restrictive, and the balance. These are always symbolized as, in quote, hands. Now, remember we correlated this to the tree of the Sefirot, of which you have three in the right column, three in the left column, four Sefirot in the center column. If we're going to correspond the sefirot like this to hands, hey, shouldn't we have then three arms or three hands, one with three fingers on the right, three fingers on the left, four fingers in the middle? Wouldn't that correspond correctly to the sefirot? No. You're thinking literally about a symbolic application. Don't do that. Understand that when we gaze upon our natural world from the concept of our senses, our eyes, our ears, very interesting little teaching that uh, is brought by the sages. In the Talmud, it, the concepts are introduced with a term, which in Aramaic is Tashma, come and listen. In the Zohar, which again, it says, Ta chaze, come see. What's the difference between coming and listening and coming and seeing? The answer is they're very different ways of experiencing the world. Ta always means come. In other words, you have to actually like pick up, move, and be in the place to be receptive. Analytical, intellectual, Understanding of the external world. That is listening. That's why what we say, Shema Yisrael. Because Yisrael is still a concept of a global experience around us, not just inside us. And this is the intellectual way. We call this meditation in our Torah path, Hit Bo Ne Nut. Contemplation. That's what we're talking about here. And then there's this other way, ta chaze, come see, which is what you do with your eyes closed. You look and gaze within yourself to experience. So if you want to contemplate a Zoharic passage, it's not an academic intellectual exercise. You gain in the gist of what it says and you close your eyes and you try to experience it within you. So when I want to look for the sefirot within me, I look within my humanity and I can see the Hadar, the Hesed, the Din, the Rachamim. I can see within my body. I can see mirror imaging of two sides. And I could see the relationship between my tongue uh, and my hands. What's the relationship? How about something really simple? I speak. I communicate ta shema, and based upon your comprehension of my communication, which comes from my tongue, we implement and act upon it by building, doing things with our hands. This is the secret 
of the 11 sefirot in this physical world of Asiyah. But remember, there's only 10, not 11, 10, not 9. We'll talk about that in the next Mishnah. But as we continue in this Mishnah in our next class, we'll continue to learn more about it. But as you can see, we're out of time for right now. Tashma, come and listen. And once you've heard, Tahaze, come and see. That's what our kosher Torah school is all about for you to experience for yourselves. Check out our courses. Talk to you all in our next class. God bless. Ariel Bartzadok here. Find us online, koshertorah.com. Shalom.